Hey guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today is the day, the dreadful day, where I sit down and talk about what I spent in the month of January while on a no-buy and somehow still managing to spend a ton of money. So I have all my expenses out here in front of you. We're going to lay it bare. And so if you want to know how I managed to spend a shit ton of money, even in a month where I wasn't allowed to buy makeup, clothing, things that I love, keep on watching because we're getting into it right now. Okay, so I'm in between classes right now, so forgive me if I'm acting a little bit rushed, but I just got all of my um, finances in order, and in the midst of going over my statements, I realized that there was a fraudulent charge on my account, so thank you guys for holding me accountable, for keeping me from paying for some horny person to <laughs> pay for my, like, retired singles mature horny people subscription which was literally i kid you not a charge that was forty dollars and was monthly and so i'm glad that i caught that one it's currently in the process of being disputed and all that stuff so let's jump into the records so i have divided it up into what i would call want and needs if you watched my reflection video from a couple days ago you know that i mentioned that i spent a lot of money this month and i didn't really know how bad the problem was i just had the intuition to realize that like even though i was on a no buy i was still spending copious funds on things here and there that were officially actually sanctioned by my no buy and it wasn't until i actually sat down and i added up the totals that i really realized how frustrating the money is and it really does describe why I seem to be running out of money every month. Um, so this is me fully admitting that I have a problem. This is me on a good month. Um, you know, just because you make a good comfortable income every month doesn't mean that you are saving a comfortable amount of money every month. And so that's really the goal at the end of the year. I'm really hoping to transform my relationship with money, my relationship with my savings, really to change my perspective altogether around consumption. So we're going to start by <laughs> prefacing this by saying, I know it's bad. It's really bad. Um, I'm trying to be honest. I'm trying to be open. And so I'm trying to come at it from a lens of um, curiosity, of intrigue, of trying to parse out what I did, why, and um, without self-hatred, without self-loathing, trying to make reparations and to take steps towards a better future. And you'll already know that February is a little bit stricter because clothing and homewares are now, sorry, homewares are now off of the table, which you'll see is a significant chunk of what I spent on. So without further ado, let's go in order. The first thing that I bought this year, this month, was a phone case for $10. That's because the silicone phone case that I was using on my old um, phone, my phone, my old case, sorry about that. My old case was ripped and it would catch on stuff. It would catch on my clothing. It would catch on my fingers. Um, it was just like a nuisance and I figured I'm going to replace my phone case and I spent $11 on a phone case. Next thing I bought were a couple of different um, skincare items. So the first thing was a toner, and this was throughout the month. So the first thing I got was a toner, a hydrating toner. It's just a green tea toner from the brand Ines, Is and tree or in s tree um it's a green tea toner it came with some cotton pads and that cost me i think 19 or 17 dollars total i rounded it up to 20. the next thing that i purchased was cinema secrets and i don't have it with me right now but i ran out of my cinema secrets i use cinema secrets on my sonia g brushes and i find that to be a required repurchase because with my sonia g brushes or any kind of hand bundled food brushes you want to make sure that you are cleaning them very gently. So I really only clean them every couple weeks in a deep wash, but between weeks, um, you know, as pigment builds up, as I'm using saturated deep colors, I don't want the colors to be, you know, mingling and muddying up my eyeshadow or my cheek colors. And so what I do is I go in with a little bit of Cinema Secrets, which is a very, very light cleanser, and I clean my brushes off. I spot clean them around once a week or whenever I notice that the brushes are getting a little bit sullied. And so, you know, that helps to just prolong the life of my brushes. Um, I spent hundreds of dollars on those brushes, so I really want to make sure that they are taken care of in a way that is respectful to them um, and, you know, good to me. <laughs> and I, I try to make sure that, you know, the Cinema Secrets, it has enough... Um, cleansers in it that it also gets rid of some bacteria just it's not a heavy duty soap and water cleaning but I do find it to be really handy in order to preserve those brushes the reason why I don't want to use just like a microfiber towel and just like scrub them is because I find that to be really harsh on the bristles and because the natural bristles have cuticles like real hair they do hold on to powder a little bit better so just running it against a towel or something like that is usually not good enough so cinema secrets I bought the medium sized one at $12 then we have a spiralizer. As you guys have heard, I've talked your ear off about this, but my husband and I are doing Whole30, and a spiralizer was just among one of the many kitchen tools we needed to do the, uh, um, you know, the required cooking for Whole30. When I say need, I don't mean like we really need it. It's just that if you don't get a spiralizer or you don't have a spiralizer, 
you will basically just be eating boiled potatoes all day long. Um, you know, without the spiralizer, it requires a significant amount more effort, more time to cook. And, you know, Whole30 is already so much cooking. And it's not a lot of set it and forget it foods, right? Because you have to cook meats, vegetables, like you can't have any grains, you can't have any like processed foods. So it really does end up being a lot of cooking, a lot of cutting, cleaning, boiling, <laughs> frying, stirring. And so um, any amount of labor that you can kind of cut down on, especially with something as simple as spiralizing something to really get nice, even cuts of stuff, you know, making matchsticks or making, you know, really paper thin slices of vegetables that takes so much time and so much effort. So even though it was $30, it was a $30 expense that I was happy to fork over. And we use that thing almost every day and we love it. It's amazing. Side note, if you are someone who needs to eat more vegetables, I highly recommend getting a spiralizer because it really allows you to pickle and eat vegetables, even raw or in salads or mixed slaws. It's just been really convenient. And so $30, really well spent. We put it off for a little bit too long, I think. The next thing that I purchased was a flat iron. The flat iron I picked was only $20 and I got it per the recommendation of my hairstylist who said that um, I'd have to kind of flat iron some parts of my hair because of the cut that I got. Um, so it was a $20 hair iron. I didn't buy any hair products yet, but I am actually out of a hair mask and a heat protectant. Those are two things that I actually don't have that I've been putting off replacements for because of the price tag. And I think that's going to be around something like $50 for the two of them. So I'm really not looking forward to it. But yeah, hair stuff, um, a pillowcase. I got a replacement pillowcase because the silk one that I have has developed a little bit of um, staining and in particular... Some parts have become a little bit threadbare, but it's nice to have two. So the pillowcase was 20 bucks. Um, we have a shelf and a refrigerator organizer, both from Yangzaki Home. I love this company. Really reasonable prices, really beautiful home decor, and I paid $40 for those two things. A cold brewer um, contraption. So as I'm trying to not drink as much espresso, we're trying to move over to cold brew. I realized we didn't have a tool for cold brew. I know, I know people are gonna be like, oh, you can just use like a mason jar. We didn't have a mason jar. We didn't have like any vessel to make cold brew in. And I thought about just getting a pitcher, but I realized if I was gonna be paying $25 for a pitcher, I might as well fork over a little bit more money for something much more functional and much more all in one. So we've got the Asabu cold brew. It's like a metal drip. It's actually very, very well built and we've used it ever since. We love it. It really makes drinking coffee in the morning super easy without the use of an espresso machine. All right, next thing we got was a pillow. So I've been using the same pillow for the last five years or so, and I realized after a month or two of sleeping and waking up tired every day that I just had to buy a new pillow. So I finally went to Target. I got myself one of those um, plush memory foam pillows. It's a big one, uh, and that one cost me $35, which, you know, more expensive than I thought, but if I'm going to be using a pillow every single day for a year or two, I figure $35 is going to pay for itself in no time. Next, we've got two candles. Now, this is a frivolous purchase to be sure, but we got two candles for 20 bucks, and this wasn't a unsanctioned purchase at the time, and so I did find it totally, um, you know, reasonable and, you know, modest for me to get two candles. So you guys have heard me in my household. We are pretty minimalistic about our candles. We love scents. We burn scents all the time, but we don't keep a huge stockpile of candles. So um, you likely won't be hearing me talk about candles for, well, I'm on a no buy, so I'll be using up these candles and all that stuff. But you know, this one, I burned this much in the span of one month, and we've been using this every single day. In fact, this is in my monthly favorites, which I'm recording right after this. This is the Sensational Storm Candle. So this is what it looks like. If any of you guys have ever tried the um, Volcano one from Anthropology, that one smells exactly like this. It's supposed to be fruity, so I think it's tangerine, guava, and grass, but this has been such, such, such a high quality candle. I actually do have candles from Anthropology that I have had experience with, and this one absolutely is top tier right among them. <laughs> I find that most TJ Maxx candles are not good, and even if they smell good before you actually burn them, once you actually burn them, you get a feel that, that they're actually not that potent, they're not that good. The scents are a little bit flat. Um, they don't spread very well, but this one diffuses the scent incredibly. If I had to go back and buy it, I would buy two of these and I would skip this one. This is You Make Me Smile Every Day Lab Lychee Rose one. You can see that the packaging is really beautiful, quite minimalistic, quite pretty, and it smells good. It smells fine. It's got that clean vanilla scent. It's very bathroom scenty, and I personally love a good bathroom scent, but this one doesn't throw scent very far. So if I could go back and get, what, my $10 back, I really would. For $10, that big one is so much more worth the money. 
Okay, so candles, that was kind of, you know, not entirely worth it, but I did buy some skincare. So as you guys may have known, I repurchased some stuff from La Roche-Posay. I got a cleanser and a dappling. Um, so, you know, pimple stuff, I'm going <laughs> to broadly um, categorize as a $35 expense. So things that are to replace my skincare items. My skincare routine is pretty pared down. So it's a cleanser, oil, oil cleanser, gel cleanser, um, a treatment of some sort, and then a moisturizer. And that's literally all I do. So the treatment is a dappling right now. I'm very, very thoroughly working on a dappling, which is a, I think a retinol treatment for acne, but it also has the side effect of, you know, that vitamin A being really good for anti-aging and age prevention. So yeah, that's, that's skincare stuff. Um, I bought two pairs of jeans which I know I wasn't supposed to, but, you know, I have outgrown a lot of my clothing because I gained weight and I was realizing that I was unbuttoning the first button of all of my jeans literally every single day. So I finally decided that, you know, if, if it's going to increase my quality of life and I'm going to have jeans that fit me and I don't have to unbutton them when I sit down and I lean down, um, you know, so be it. So I went and I bought two pairs of jeans. So that makes them around $40 each. I think it's pretty reasonable. I love Loft. <laughs> um, even though they charged my credit card fraudulently for a number of months, I still shop there <laughs> because I like their clothing. I find that they fit me really well, especially the petite section. Um, so I bought two pairs of jeans for $79, which I felt like was a really good price. They were buy one, get one free. And, you know, I just got them in my right size, which is a number that's higher than I would like it to be. But the good news is, <laughs> I mean, it's good and bad news. The good and bad news is now they can run a little large on me. So I bought these kind of in the beginning of the month. Let's see when I bought them. I bought them on the 7th of January, and now we're approaching February 7th. And you know, through Whole30, through exercising a little bit more, they've loosened a little bit. So they're not like really baggy on me, but they are baggy enough that I probably could have not, <laughs> I probably could have not bought them, right? Uh, yeah, it, it's just one of those things where I bought it because I didn't want to continue suffering unbuttoning my buttons and feeling fat and feeling, you know, like it, it's just not a good reminder that you're bigger than you used to be, right? And so for those few weeks where I was putting on jeans that fit me, that felt good. Um, but I guess I could have suffered through that for a couple more weeks and and kept the $70 in my pocket. But in any case, um, I can't return them at this point. And I own them. They're beautiful jeans. I really like them. If anything, I might be able to declutter two pairs of older jeans. But that was a $70, sorry, $80 expense. We purchased some cookbooks for Whole30 that was kind of an indulgent purchase. We decided to split the cost of Whole30 between my husband and I, so um, we did need some recipe books and we actually followed recipes to the T for the first week and part of the second week of Whole30, so that way we could give ourselves the best chance of success. I've mentioned previously that Whole30 is quite expensive, and I don't mean it has to be expensive, I just mean if you really want it to be a positive experience that changes your life and changes your mentality and you want to do it in a way that is sustainable and doesn't make you hate vegetables and fruits and eating clean, um, then I highly suggest you, you throw a good amount of money at it so that way you have a good perspective and a good experience. And um, for that reason, I actually don't regret spending $120 on cookbooks. I really only bought three cookbooks. Um, so it's surprising that was so expensive. I purchased Ready, Set, Go, which is a Asian paleo cookbook. So love that one. That one absolutely is incredible. We bought a Whole30, like the actual Whole30 cookbook and another cookbook that I think is paleo. So paleo is very close to Whole30. It's just that you can eat I think sugar on paleo. Um, so anytime there's sugar or added sweeteners, we just don't add it. But other than that, the cookbooks have been really, really good. Um, I'm going to do an entire video on Whole30 and how it's changed my life and, you know, my experience with it. I'm clearly a similar weight. <laughs> I, I think I lost some weight um, and I've definitely slimmed down a bit, but it's not like I lost, you know, 30 pounds or something. I mean, I don't really know how much weight I lost because I didn't weigh myself. You're not really allowed to weigh yourself, um, but I'll have before and after pictures. Um, I'll talk about how it's affected me, my perspective with food, my relationship with certain triggers in my diet and what we cooked, what we ate. If you are interested in that or if you have any specific questions, do let me know in the comments below. But just know that that video is coming. It's coming in the future. Um, but I did spend a significant chunk of my money this month making sure that I was prepared for that project, which included buying expensive cookbooks. All right, the next thing are my haircuts, my two haircuts in January. I got my first haircut. It was $45. I got it at a local salon and the lady did a terrible job of cutting my hair. She hacked it off with a razor. She did a terrible, you know, thing where she would just like tear, tear, tear at my hair and it was wet and she would use a rat tail comb and it was absolutely horrendous. And so after three weeks of lamenting about my hair, I went to see a specialist at Aveda who did a 
basically a corrective cut she you know like if you do corrective color where you box dye or you do like a terrible botched dye job and they correct it with color correcting that's what she did but with a haircut um, and so that's the cut that I have now. It's a really structured cut, which I don't actually like. And you'll notice that I have these like two wing pieces in the front and then it kind of like goes like this. It's an asymmetrical cut. It's got a lot of like light texture on the top. It's, I mean, objectively a very beautiful haircut. I think um, it suits, I mean, it's, it's holding its shape well. It washes well, it dries well. Clearly the hairstylist did a very technically good job. It's just that it's not a hairstyle that I feel very comfortable in personally, but you know, in total, both of those things cost me $140. Um, blender. We spent $190 replacing our Nutribullet, and I don't regret it at all. We have the KitchenAid K400. It is a beautiful machine. I don't mean beautiful as in pretty. I mean, it is pretty. We got it in the stone pink color, so it is objectively beautiful, but it is actually um, an increase in our quality of life. She takes up precious counter space. She's actually um, one of our most used kitchen tools. I mean, we use all of our kitchen tools. I mean, I can think of what's on our counter. We have the espresso machine, the blender, the stove, and then some spices and some vegetables. And underneath we have the Instant Pot. All of those things are really necessary in a family. So we use the blender. The blender is amazing. Um, every day we have probably, yeah, we, we probably use the blender at least once a day, if not more than that. So yesterday we used it twice because I made a pureed soup as well as a green smoothie. But on most days it's like just a green smoothie or just a sauce or something like that. If you are someone who, um, you know, uses a, a blender reasonably and you're doing more than protein shakes, I would recommend getting a good blender. I think that, you know, the cost of buying and replacing crappy blenders over the years is just too great to worry about. I actually bought a cheaper blender off Amazon. It was a no-name blender imported from Asia, um, and it was, you know, it was cheap. <laughs> and I bought it. It was half price. I think it was maybe $50 or $60. I purchased it thinking, you know, it would be enough, and it immediately like almost caught on fire the first day like I could smell the rubber burning um it I had to constantly smash the food in with uh, like a, a spoon it wouldn't like create a vortex it was just a terrible blender so I just think it's not worth the fuss if you are someone who blends regularly I would say invest in a good blender it's not worth the pain <laughs> of a bad one so that one absolutely is is worth the money it was just expensive and the last price was dental work. Dental work cost us $450 this month. Um, it is just expensive to take care of your teeth. I mean, obviously I'm not paying $450 every month to get my teeth done. It's just, you know, when my husband and I have to go get fillings every, you know, however many times a year to get x-rays, checkups, cleanings. Um, you know, he has to go in and get his wisdom teeth removed and I have two more fillings that I have to get done within the year. So, you know, once the dental things come up, they come up and I have to treat them. I can't let them fester. But I think that just shows us how much we need to have in terms of padding. <sighs> so that's everything. Let's break down what the actual costs were. So what I would call need are a total of, you know, the dental work, which was a need, and then things that were conducive to living a higher quality life in general, right? So mostly related to food things and the whole 30 journey. So for instance, we've got $450 worth of dental stuff, and then we've got another 400 ish dollars of et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if I break down that et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it comes down to the blender, the haircut, um, skincare replacements, and uh, things for the home, like the cold brewer and the spiralizer. I wouldn't call those needs per se, like I have them as needs in quotation marks. I don't regret those purchases. Those are purchases that I feel like I made in good conscience that were positive impacts in my life. If I think about what I purchased this month that have affected my life in a positive way, those are right there up in the top of the list. The blender is like peak. <laughs> the cookbooks are right after that. The spiralizer, those are things that I use. And especially in light of Whole30, where we are following a very restrictive diet that could potentially cause my mental health to go way down, it, it's done the opposite, right? Investing in um, a positive relationship with my food and my kitchen has increased my motivation to take care of myself in that way. And so I really, really, really want to emphasize how it is expensive to do so, or at least I chose a route that was expensive because I knew that there were a lot of barriers for me to eat well and have a good relationship with, I have a complicated history with food, so we'll, we'll get into it. Um, I'm just saying that I know it comes off as frivolous spending, but to me, I don't regret the cost. It wasn't um, a regretful choice for me. In terms of things that I really maybe didn't have to buy, um, I realized that that money fritters away very quickly. So buying a replacement phone case, I mean, I don't want my phone to be without a case. Um, but $10 here, um, $20 for the candles, $20 for the flat iron, um, you know, 
$80 for my jeans, right? Those are little things here and there that I don't really have to buy, but because I bought them, I've frittered away a significant amount of money. Um, so yeah, that is my total cost, just around $1,000 in a month, and that is a lot. I mean, I, and many of you guys have watched Hannah Louise post in, and she talks about basically just having $200 a month. I didn't do the math to subtract replacements because I surmise that a lot of that money that I spent was either on health expenses, food expenses, or on replacements. There were very few things that were just like random purchases. Like I guess my home organizer, like the shelf for my kitchen, or the um, hot tool were things that I added in like out of nowhere. But you know, it really just goes to show that you can very quickly run out of money. Um, yeah, so for February, we're going to be more on track. Of course, I'm documenting all of my expenses as per usual. We are starting off pretty strong, nothing excessive so far, but again, we're only a couple days in. Reminder of the rules for everyone as well as myself, no makeup, no um, new hair care items except for hair care replacements, so a mask and a heat protectant. I don't think I'm out of shampoo or conditioner, so those should be the only two things that I need to buy. Uh, did I say no makeup, no hair care, no clothing, and no shoes, as well as no homewares. So homewares that are unnecessary. So things like decor or boxes or stasher bags, which are another thing that I've been really interested in. Um, containers, I don't know, like new knives or like new spoons or teaware, like those are all off limits. Replacements for pantry items or things that we need, like matcha or tea or like vitamins those are fair game obviously i don't know i can't really think of anything in particular but if there were something that really did need to be replaced to improve the quality of my life i just have to make sure i have a clear conscience and that i am making informed purchases all right let's talk about our last thoughts because this is where it gets interesting i feel like even though i spent a lot of money this month and even though it does make me feel kind of bad to come on here and tell you that i spent like a thousand dollars in a month even on a no buy i do acknowledge that things could have been much worse, which is crazy. How could it have been much worse? But I think about, you know, my shopping habits prior and, you know, I, there were a lot of things that I actually didn't buy. I have an entire list in my notebook of things that I literally did not pay for this month that I was really hoping to get. And let me just try to add this up. 200, 250, 310, 350, 380, 400, 425, 430, 600, 690, uh, $750, $800. Yeah, there was $800 worth of more stuff that I ostensibly was going to buy, right? It wasn't even a maybe. Um, there, there are things that I really did think I was going to get. Um, and that is literally just the nature of how my mind works. I am just in a place where my shopping brain is so broken and, you know, it is so easy to buy things. You know, the, the wealth of things that would be good purchases, versus the amount of discretionary income that we really should be spending is just so vast. The gap is so big. Um, and I know that I have a, a tough road ahead of me. I just, I ask that you are respectful in the comments, that you understand where I'm coming from, that you understand that I understand that this is definitely a first world problem, but I'm trying to take steps to be better, to fix myself, to set myself up for greater happiness in the future, to make sure that we can move into a better home with more equity, that we can live a life that has room for emergencies, you know, all those things that are really important that I feel like right now, because of my spending addiction, because of rules that I didn't have in place, because of a twisted perspective, all of those things have made it difficult for me to confront my past, difficult to change my habits, but that doesn't mean they're impossible. So please um, let me know how your month has been, if you've been doing okay, if you've been sliding backwards, if you're making progress. I feel like Small progress is still progress, so I'm hopeful that this month will be amazing. Thank you so much for lending me your time and your ears. I love you. I would love to hear what's up with you guys, and I will see you very soon. Bye!